Nushan Williams boasted of as many as 75 sexual partners that he may have knowingly exposed to the AIDS virus. When news of Williams hit the streets, a Brooklyn teenager panicked, fearing she may be one of his victims. Her uncle spoke in her behalf. She's terrified. She don't know if she, gonna, if she has it or not. Now, actually, did she sleep with him without any condom? She says she don't remember, but she, you know, she don't really remember all the times. So I need, we're, going, we're on our way to Kings County now to find out. The 17-year-old girl lives in Crown Heights. She was dating Williams for six months before she started college, according to her uncle. He says he even invited Williams inside his home to eat and watch football games. I mean, for him to actually bring us to my family's house, I mean, it's, it's bad. I mean, I would love to just ask him why. Why my niece have all these people running around here? Williams lived in the Albany houses for several weeks last January when he returned from Chautauqua County in upstate New York. He is believed to have started an AIDS epidemic in the upstate community, his youngest victim being 13 years old. Before moving upstate, he lived in a Crown Heights brownstone with a friend. Investigators are trying to track down Williams' roommate who is dying of AIDS. They believe he might be able to tell them how Williams got infected with the HIV virus and some names of Williams' sexual partners. Williams is currently under arrest for drug charges at Rikers Island, but Crown Heights residents believe the damage has already been done. Who's to know who's been um, infected with this and who's been dealing with who? I mean, it's a shame. I mean... I, I just don't know. I'm, 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 ter I'm just messed up on the inside. For now, the family has to live with the tension and uncertainty while they wait for the test results to come back. In Brooklyn, Janine Aguirre, New York One. This is really, really close to home. There's a lot of people shaking in their boots around here. I can tell you that much right now. Fear has been caused by new Sean Williams, who supposedly infected dozens of Brooklyn residents with the AIDS virus through unprotected sex. He is being held in isolation at Rikers Island, but that's no consolation to those who live in the Albany houses. They worry their one-time neighbor may have spread the deadly disease knowingly to many girls in the Crown Heights neighborhood. A lot of people shocked, you know what I'm saying? You know, for somebody to have AIDS to be doing something dirty like that, that's foul. It worries me a lot, for real. But I don't know, it's deep now. They don't came to the projects. A lot of stuff going to be revealed. Williams lived in the nine building housing project for several weeks in January. He stayed at this apartment with a friend named Tamika Wittenberg. Tamika's mother told reporters she doesn't believe her daughter is one of the victims. Do you know she was um, intimate with this man? No, she was not. That was her, her boyfriend's friend. Police say the Albany houses here in Crown Heights is a base for the Bloods gang, and Williams was a Bloods gang member. Neighbors pointed to this apartment as the gang hangout, but even though Williams ran with a gang, many residents described the 20-year-old as a man who kept to himself. He was a quiet cat. He was quiet. He was always quiet. I was surprised to hear the news that he would, he, that he would go out like that. <laughs> I ain't never known him to be like that. Williams was raised by his grandmother at this apartment complex on Eastern Parkway. He moved upstate to Chautauqua County after he was acquitted of murder charges in 1995. Officials believe it was Williams who started an HIV outbreak in the upstate community. He could face charges of reckless endangerment and sexual misconduct, among others. Brooklyn residents have their own ideas for a just punishment. I think he should be castrated because I think it's highly inappropriate and destructive for a man to know that he's affected with the HIV virus and affecting these sisters out in society when everybody's trying to survive. I feel that he should get the chair because, you know, that's wrong what he did. You know, he ended a lot, of, a lot of young girls' lives before they even started. Officials say so far, Williams has identified 17 sexual partners, even though he has boasted of as many as 75. The city's HIV hotline has received more than a dozen calls since the word got out about Williams. Guards stood by every door at Jamestown High School as AIDS counselors talked to students inside. Superintendent Craig King wants all of them to know about the counseling and testing services available. Despite our best efforts, some children may not be getting the message, or if they are, they, they do not believe that it could happen to them. This terrible event should make them believers. Jamestown High graduate Misty Freeman's a believer. Her 15-year-old brother, Gaetano, is a sophomore at the school. Well, he's very well educated because my mom educates us, but, um, you know, he just, he <laughs> it's just hard, you know, because he doesn't know who to go out with, who not to go out with and he's more cautious now. Institute Street runs next to the high school to a dead end. It's known as a place where students smoke cigarettes and buy drugs. It's also known as a place Nushan Williams spent some of his time. 
One young man I talked to who said he knew Nushan Williams from the street said he was not too well liked by other men. He often got robbed and beaten up, but the girls were attracted to him. He had the money, the clothes, you know what I'm saying? He had it going on right like that. Who was he like personally? A, a bitch, apparently, you know what I'm saying? Look what happened. He's not a nice guy, apparently. State Health Director Barbara DeBuono said Williams claimed to have sexual contact knowing he had HIV with 28 people in Chautauqua County and 75 to 80 people in New York City. There is a lot of pressure for young teenagers today to engage in sexual activity. And if there's any message that we can send to those young people today, it's don't have sex. Williams is charged in Chautauqua County with statutory rape for his contact with a 13-year-old girl who is now HIV positive. He's currently in jail in New York City on unrelated drug charges. Dan Smith, our news. What's your first memories of him in the neighborhood? Well, I grew up hanging out with him and, um, you know, played basketball, did other things with him. What was he like as a kid? Just like any other kid, except his family was a little troubled. What did he have at home? Not much? No, you know, his family didn't have as much as anybody else's, but he was still, you know, trying to survive. And when did he start to come into his own, choose his path, you know, selling drugs, you know, making his way? How'd that go? I guess as a teenager. Did you notice the change? Well, it wasn't nothing that, that really surprised me, but, you know, I knew, I knew eventually along the line that's what he was going to get into. And... Was he a tough kid? Was he a kid who who was feared in the neighborhood, or was or was he? Uh, how would you describe him? I guess as he got older, people started to fear him because of what he was doing. I guess, but I never had any problems with him, so that's why it never affected me, as far less as with me being free of him or anybody else. What about him and girls? He seemed to have a, a way with that. I, from what I hear, I, I guess he has a way with it, but on an average out here, you know, just like anybody else. Yeah. Was he particularly funny or charming? Was he the kind of person, um, you know, if he got into a conversation with you, you'd like him right away? If you didn't know him, you didn't? Well, I mean, he wasn't, on a conversation level, you could have a conversation with him. But I, I, I don't know him particularly as far as with him and women, what kind of conversations he had. Did he make them fear him? Did he, you know, charm them? I don't really know to say exactly on that level. When he was last living on this block in that house up there, what was it like? They were selling drugs out the house. Yeah. And what, what was he like in terms of his appearance? You know, was he going uphill, downhill? It depends which path you took him out as far as him trying to turn his life around. Yeah. I guess, no, he'd be going downhill. What about the other way? Well, I guess he was doing his thing. You know, he was surviving. That's that's how he looked at it. He was trying to survive. Now, he got shot uh, down here and then kind of left town. Yeah, that's what I heard. Was that the last you saw of him? Yeah, that's the last time I saw him. And... Uh, I mean, you probably know him longer than anybody we spoke to. If you had to sum him up as a character, as your old friend, how would you do it? Just somebody that life was troubled and it just took away it, the, the way it ended out. You know, it's not really surprising. It's just, it's a sorry story, you know, for everybody. What about it surprised you, what you read in the papers and what you later found out about it? As far as with him smoking drugs and being homeless, because I figured he was doing what he had to do to survive so he wouldn't be homeless and so that, you know, he could survive. But then when you get hooked on what you're selling, it's surprising. And when you found out about um, having sex with all of those people, uh, knowing he was HIV positive for more than a year and um, passing that on, what do you think about that? I thought that was kind of sick. Seriously. Knowing him the way you do, would that be in keeping with his personality? I really, you know, it's like when you, tr you can't really ex know what to expect for someone when they trouble, when, when they grow up in, in an environment like that. You don't really know what to expect. Would, you would like to think certain things, but you know, you can't really say definite. So, you know, anything is possible especially in this day and age. When did you first meet him? How old were you? How old was he? 
He was about maybe nine years old. I was about 11. And you were kids together? Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Oh, I didn't get your name. Joe. Joe what? I'm just get a two-shot. Okay. Yeah. And did he rob the bank? Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but I was... Let's not put that on camera. <laughs> okay. Well, something not, like that. Let's not. That was just, like, off the record. Okay. okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, you know what, what about his mother? Uh, we we kind of went through okay. that. Yeah. You can just grab a little two-shot, guys? Okay. Please don't take me. Come on. You're not going to bite. Come on. Come on. Hello. Yeah. Hey, Sally, what's up? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of another ABC. I wanted to know if we could talk to you about uh, Nishan and that whole case. You know. What's um? What's your reaction then to the whole thing? Please don't put that camera on me. Okay. All right, sure. Yeah. Because last time we came to my tour and I don't know if it was ABC and I got a bar rap on it telling me that that was one of his girls that he sex with or whatever and I'm not. Mm -hmm. I am not. No. Oh really? I mean I have friends that verify it for me. I didn't even look because I really didn't want, I had nothing bad to say about him. Well you don't have to say anything bad about him. I just wanted to know what was he like. I, I don't you know? have no information on why he did what he did. I don't, um, I knew that he was sick with the HIV virus, I knew all of that, but for me to say, we, me and him grew up together, we live in the, we live in the neighborhood, he had family here, I don't know where they are now, and it's kind of shocking that I think, that, to know that somebody could do that, especially somebody that I know, but I have, I'm not going to judge him anyway, because if you have to get to somebody's head to find out why they use that thing. Probably he was going through a lot, but that still doesn't excuse him, affect a lot of girls and ruin their lives also. Do you think that using crack the way he was towards the end kind of just broke him down to the point that I... It could be probably that, it could be probably many things, probably things that we would never know. You or I or anybody around here know, but just nothing to say about it because to tell you the truth, he's my friend and all and I know him, it's disgusting. And, and... There's a lot of girls I know around here that did like him, and I'm really, my concern right now is I hope that they did for him to check or sleep with him and they get sick, because that would be another problem on top of another problem in, a, in this area. Did you ever go out with him? No. We, he used to live around here, and we was young, growing up, playing ball, going out, you know, regular kids. Right, kid stuff. Kid stuff, that's it. And I have a son. So he used to always take my son bike riding and stuff. It's a real nice side of him. But I haven't seen him recently. I haven't seen him in years, like a couple of years or so. And and when I did see him off and on, he was just he looked the same to me. We never talked he never it was just hiding by how you doing, how the kids and that's about it. You know, I never heard from anybody else about that nice side of him. Could you tell me about him playing with your kid and you know? He was like, just a like, comedian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Always cracking jokes, acting silly, dancing funny, and you know, we'll, there were times when it'd be like a nice hot summer night, it'd be all of us outside, we'd just sit, talk, you know, being somewhere like like teenagers, that's exactly what we did. So he was funny and charming. Yeah, and I never see him, aside of him, where I would see him in a fight or anything or whatever, to me, he was just like one of the boys around the neighborhood, that's it, that is it. So when I hear this, it's kind of like bugging me out because I don't, it's, it's not the same. It's not the same guy you know almost. No. And if I, I me, mean, if he was in front of me right now and, and I had one question to ask him, I'll just ask him, why did you do it? And if you know you was going through a lot, you could have came back to your neighborhood and talked to somebody if you really needed that help. Do you have friends who went with him who are worried now? No. No? It wasn't even like that. I mean, the ratio of here of girls and boys like half and half. So. No, we was just, what's up, how you doing, everything all right with you, yeah, need anything, no. Everybody looked out for each other on this block. Oh, that's nice. Everybody did. So, everybody on this block just basically had nothing bad to say about, well, not, I'm not going to say for everybody, but some people that I know, and they're not really, whatever. You know, you're not, yeah. you're not a bad person. Then this block grew older, new people came on, and, you know, 
Hey, where's his family these days? I know they were here, and now they're kind of. Hey, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. He, his mother, I don't know. His family basically is a very nice family. They're real cool people. You walk past. Yeah. They don't have to camera yeah, me. I hope not. Right. No, you're good, boy. No. Right. 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 Do you have any pictures of him? <laughs> no. Yeah, we were looking for something. You know, there's only that one mug shot that's out there. So yeah, I know. That and his family probably has a lot of don't know where they are. Not at all. Well, I haven't seen them in a while. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, when was the last time he was around here? It was a good couple of years ago. When it was cold, it was winter. Yeah. So, like two years ago. I think the year when we had that blizzard or something. It was around that time. Yeah. Well, it's like 95. Yeah. yeah. 96. And when I did see him, it was like, hi, you're eating and out. Uh, he's out and came to visit friends. He said, how you doing? I said, fine. How's your kids? They fine. And he was like, well, I'll talk to you later. Okay. That's how it was. That's really how it was. Well, thanks um, for talking to me, and I'm sorry we like, grabbed you like this and all that. No, it's okay. Are you, um, Keisha? Yeah. How do you know my name? Right on the mailbox. You know, old detective. Oh, okay. <laughs> right on the mailbox. Well, I really don't have nothing bad to say. I have nothing bad to say about him. I mean, I don't want my face on the camera. Well, You're not rolling, are you? Not rolling. No, okay. <laughs> That's it. He's a very nice person. I'm kind of shocked with this guy. Yeah, that's a rough story, the whole thing. It's rough and it's terrible, but yeah. I don't know. But it's a beautiful day. Yeah, it's nice. Like my third. Yeah, but he did. I didn't know he had it either. But you know. So, last time you saw him. He's always kind of like upstate down here often. So, like on and off. Yeah, on and off. He used to come down and come back up. He's always come around the neighborhood to see who he was. Why was he always going back and forth? Like the last time they. They said uh, he got shot. He left town for a while. I don't know. He, he you said think people don't want to stay in one place for too long. That's not going to be good. Yeah. Because it was time for change. Did you guys know any of the girls he went out with around here? He got me to talk about them. That's the whole thing. It's like, you know when you grow up with the same person you right. know about, but since to them, they just your friend. You just meet right. So he didn't mean to talk to nobody around here. He was just like somebody who's dead funny because you know up there everybody's worried everybody's getting tested. Because I'm saying down here I don't really know you know I don't know that situation that was up there down here but maybe an up there he didn't know that was so up there maybe he knew us and he didn't want us to do something and nobody's like around here. The funny thing is, you know, I'm reading it in newspapers and all that, everybody said he was feared, he was this, he was that, and I'm talking to people here that say, you know, she told me across the street he used to play with her kids, you say he was a nice guy. He was nice. He was nice. To, he was, to us, he was nice. He grew up right there with us. He was nice. Where did his family live? Did that go No, as far as I'm concerned, they got evicted. Huh? No, from which building? They was in that building. <laughs> they were in that building. Yeah. Yeah, they did. First they used to live right there, the building got shut down, and then they moved over there, and then I don't know where they went after that, they scattered. Yeah, they're around somewhere. <laughs> and where's the record, uh, come, record store that he uh, Forest, Forest Records? It's up, it's it's on it's up the block? Yeah, yeah. between Eastern Parkway and this block right here. Got it. It'll take a walk up there, see the guys are out. Yeah, they're all right. Thanks a lot. Y'all late. I mean, probably why we got the store open. right there. Oh, yeah, it's not open right now. It's not open. Yeah, but they got it wrong, right? How come? But they already talked to the guy up here. Oh, okay. Gotta go there later. They be open it ever since this happened. Thanks a lot. I don't go through the street. Come here through the street. I don't know what happened. I think since his grandma died, a lot of stuff just happened. His grandma died? Yeah. Or his other grandma? His great, his great, great, great. And like, I need mean, that. Yeah, they want to do it fair and square. Where is that? Um, Crown Street. Between North Street and New York. Is that a public school? Private school? Um, it's kind of like a it's public slash private school. Yeah. It's kind of like a school. Yeah. Private school. Yeah. It's kind of like a private school. Yeah. It's kind of like a private school. Yeah. It's kind of like a private school. Yeah. And you can't transfer it. You're interested in journalism. We got to talk law, later. Especially law. Well, more law than journalism. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, how long ago was he here that you remember? Uh, I can't really recall that because I, I left New York Street like when I was like 
nine years old. And from the, you know, I, like usually I just see him like when he passed or whatever. He had a lot of junior stuff here. And he used to be out here. So I guess that attracted the girls to him. He was a nice boy. Now he seemed to be pretty charming, because I mean if you if you read the stories, um, well, he had me, a lot of girls. To me, I he was like a family friend. Right. My whole family knew him. We got along with his sister. Um, we got along with his grandmother, his cousins, and everybody. And I just don't know what happened to him. Do you know um oh, do you know any of the girls that he went out with? Any of the girls? No. I can't remember. And what was the um what was his personality, if you had to describe him? He was just like a cool dude. He was just, I don't know, he was just suave. I don't, he was funny. Sometimes he was like kind of serious. And I don't know what happened. I think it's because the passing of his great-grandmother. When you heard what happened? I couldn't what? believe it. Oh my goodness, my eyes were just like stuck on the TV. Like, that's JoJo, oh my goodness. And that's what you knew him as here, Jojo, right? Yeah. And when you heard that, first that he was a crack dealer, but then second that um, he had the HIV virus for 13 months, he was still sleeping with people, what were, what were your reaction to both of those things? I was just like, I just wanted to kill him, to tell you the truth, because I know Jojo, and he's, he's a nice young man. And I, I just can't believe that he could go around and do that. For revenge, what is this? It's not know. a war game or whatever. You can't get back at people for that. Innocent people? That does, that's just stupid. Got it. What would get a name on it? Okay. Uh, okay. okay. It was her. It's... Tanisa Garrett. Tanisa. And then it's spelled Tanisa. Yeah. T-A-N-E-S-A. Garrett. G-A-R-R-E-T-T. Got it. From Crown School. You did all the talking over here. You didn't say it. What was his charm? I think, I guess it was the jewelry. Cause, like, okay. There were a lot of gold. Was it? Yeah, it was a lot of gold. He, he was a neat guy. Like, whenever you see him, he'll just, just be like, what's up or whatever. I don't know what he used to charm girls, but I, I guess it was sort of good since he had so many. And I never thought that he would sleep with a 13 year old. Cause he's 20. Yeah. And that's kind of like overboard. Yeah. Bit of a spread there. In school, we were talking about him, and people was some of their reactions were just like um, we were kind of shocked that like a person would actually go around sleeping with people for revenge because they had AIDS and things. We thought that it wasn't really right because they didn't do anything to him. They probably didn't even know him, and they probably just thought that he was just like a regular boy trying to get a girlfriend or something and they didn't even know him. He didn't have to go around sleeping with them knowing you using like um didn't you not using any condoms, unprotected sex and no Sean Williams enough of a risk to Western New Yorkers to keep him from walking free after he serves his prison term. Now, he was locked up after being convicted of infecting women with HIV, but you might be surprised by what his attorney is saying now. News Force Luke Moretti joins me with that. Okay. Yeah, Jackie, a civil confinement trial is set for the middle of next month. Now, a jury will be seated and have to decide if new Sean Williams remains confined in state prison. But now there's some new evidence emerging. It's a surprising revelation by attorney John Nuccherino in state Supreme Court. He doesn't have HIV. He can't pass HIV. Uh, he isn't a predator. He's been mislabeled as a predator for all these years. And it's about time that we start slowly setting the record straight. Nuccherino says in order for new Sean Williams to prepare for the blood draw and testing, he was taken off all medications. He says the blood examination was done by the University of Massachusetts Medical School. He gave up many years of his life because of this. He has been vilified for a decade and a half uh, across this country. In the late 1990s, Williams pleaded guilty to statutory rape and reckless endangerment in Chautauqua County. He was supposed to be released from prison three years ago, but he continues to be held under a state civil confinement law that applies to highly dangerous sex offenders. Chautauqua County Sheriff Joseph Gerasi says he's surprised by the claim that Williams is not HIV positive and says he'll wait to see what happens. Doesn't uh, remove the fact that he 
had uh, at least one partner that was uh, 13 years old at the time. News 4 legal analyst Terry Connors says the HIV claim now raises the question of whether state confinement is appropriate. It's no longer does he meet the statutory criteria for release, can they hold him in on that basis. Now it's there's no basis whatsoever for even keeping him in jail. Former so Chautauqua County HIV District HIV Attorney James Subject prosecuted Williams. So some of the women that were infected could have only been infected by New Sean Williams. And as a consequence, I believe that what we did was right based upon accurate medical information. Now, Attorney John Nucciarino says at some point he'll seek to vacate Williams' conviction that hinged on him being HIV positive. Yeah. In the meantime, jury selection in the civil confinement trial is set to begin next month in Chautauqua County. This is a troubling case for yeah. a lot of people. Now, that civil confinement trial, which will determine if he walks free, right? right can we be there? Can no. cameras be there? No. No. No public, uh, no media. Attorney Nucciarino says this falls under mental hygiene laws, a situation that he kind of described as very personal and very revealing. And because of that, a judge ordered restrictions on who can be inside the So courtroom. we just have to wait. Until we'll have to wait outside. Be free anytime soon. The notorious sex offender was denied the chance to go free, even though he has served his prison sentence. As Channel 2's Claudine Ewing reports tonight, he remains in civil confinement. Nushan Williams, also known as Shaitik Johnson, is in a secure treatment facility. But they're not free to come and go. And he will remain there until the courts allow him to leave. <laughs> Williams has already served his prison sentence for rape and reckless endangerment. He pleaded guilty to having unprotected sex, knowing he was HIV positive, and not telling his partners about his health status. But his latest appeal to be released from civil confinement failed. He did not initially complete sex offender um, rehabilitation programming in jail. They considered the comments of the guards. Two inmates and two correction officers testify that Nushan intended to continue that behavior upon his release, specifically referencing underage girls. The higher court concluded the evidence is legally sufficient to support the verdict that he has a mental abnormality that predisposes him to the commission of conduct constituting a sex offense, and that results in him having serious difficulty controlling that conduct. Experts use terms like antisocial personality disorder, psychopathy, and more disturbing is an expert's diagnosis of Nushan Williams having sexual sadism. It's a very strong word, and, you know, uh, part of it goes back to uh, conduct that was summarized in pre-sentence reports and testified to uh, by a woman who, at the age of 13, alleges that he attempted to rape her. There are several people in civil confinement under the state's Sex Offender Management and Treatment Act. There are a number of cases that are similar to this that maybe don't garner as much attention. Williams' case is one of the most high profile because of the number of victims. The court says he had sex with 42 females, 13 of whom contracted the virus. People in civil confinement are those with serious psychological diagnosis until experts on both sides agree that Nushan Williams no longer suffers from a mental abnormality that makes him a dangerous sex offender. He can continue to be confined. Claudine Ewing, Channel 2 News.